Hi, welcome to Exploring Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today's topic is deprogramming ourselves from free will belief. Okay, now before we get into this, I want to, like, as we usually do, go over the purpose of the show, the definition of free will, and just completely refute it. Um, okay, so let's do this. Now, the reason I'm doing this show, the reason this is like episode number 64, is because, like, the universe, because if we don't have a free will, the universe has made practically all of us, most of us, you know, certainly our leaders and our governments and our colleges and schools and stuff, completely mistaken, completely wrong um, about the nature of human will. It's made us believe that we have a free will when we don't. And, and like, that creates so much, so many problems for us. I mean, like, because if we didn't, like, if we, if everyone got that free will is an illusion, we would be so much more compassionate to each other, to ourselves. We wouldn't feel, we wouldn't blame others. We wouldn't feel guilty, okay? It'd be, it'd be a brand new world. And let me tell you something, like, with this Occupy revolution of the 99% happening, like, this spring, summer, and fall, you know, like, we can go into this, like, you know, well, you know, the 1% are evil, you know, they deserve this, whatever, whatever, and, you know, they could feel the same way about the 99%. We can do it that way, you know, based on this, this mistaken notion of free will. And incidentally, I've got, you know, the sign, like, on its side, it's kind of like a metaphor. It's like, you know, I'm not really turning the world upside down with this, but I'm turning it on its side, you know, and free will is going down. But anyway... We could, uh, we could just go into, through this revolution just like blaming ourselves and just like, you know. Or if God willing, if fate willing, if, if you know, because it's not up to us. If we're lucky and the universe makes us like really get it, you know, sometime soon. And, you know, we're kind of working on that, but, you know, it's not up to us. Then, you know, like then we can like, it'll be so much kinder, so much, you know, we can just flow into a new world, you know. Um, all right, now, what do I mean by free will? I should have started with this. All right, when people say they have a free will, that, you know, what they're saying is like, yeah, what I do is completely up to me, that nothing in, nothing that I don't have control of is taking any part in any decision I make. And, well, the, all right. Now, the easiest way to refute that is to invoke the principle of causality. And, and causality is that it, it's cause and effect. Everything has a cause. Nothing happens without a cause. Nothing happens without a cause. Think about it. You can't have things happening without a cause. That's like such basic, you know, experience, basic logic, basic science. As a matter of fact, science is based on that principle. You know, science couldn't work at all without causality. So like, so, so like how do you free, free will easily? If everything has a cause, that means everything we do, everything we think, feel, decide, has a cause. And naturally, that cause of everything we decide has a cause. And that cause has a cause. And that cause has a cause. And, you know, you got to remember, causes to things never come, uh, you know, after things. A cause will always come before its effect. That's why it's like cause and effect. And so, like, so... With each cause, for whatever it is, you have this chain of causation going back. It's going back in time. So, like, and you take this, it's a causal regression going back to before we were born, before the, the earth was created, before the sun was created, you know, and presumably perhaps before the Big Bang. We don't know what, you know, what, um, what happened before then, but, you know, at least to the Big Bang. So, like, that, that is why free will is completely impossible. There, there are other ways of, of understanding. As a matter of fact, I've got a show coming up sometime soon. Hold on. On, on, um, on May 3rd, yeah, um, 10 ways of refuting free will. So, you know, there, there, for example, like we have an unconscious where, where all our data is stored and by definition we're not conscious of it. So how, and like when we say we have a free will, we're, we're saying we have a consciously free will. But if we can't access the, the data upon which we make our decisions because it's in the unconscious, then two things. One, obviously we can't be freely, freely making the decision. Um, and two, obviously every decision we make has to be made at the level of the unconscious. The unconscious is the only part of our mind that has access to data in the unconscious. Think about it. 
you know? <laughs> so like, so anyway, that is why free will is impossible. Okay. But the theme of the show is deprogramming ourselves from free will belief. And the idea is like, you know, it's not, you know, the universe, the universe, let me tell you something. The universe has fun with us. I mean, like the universe has made, has programmed us to, to get, you know, the second fundamental fact of existence wrong. The first fundamental fact of, of human existence is we exist, all right? The second fundamental fact is that we do things, you know? We, we, we think, feel and all. And so like this second fundamental fact about us, the universe has gotten us to, to get completely wrong. It's just like, you know, it got us to like think that like that that uh, we were the center of the of the universe that like that our world is completely flat that that the sun was revolving around us you know i mean the, the universe i don't know if it's got a sense of humor or what but like it just gets us to get you know to get things wrong um you know and so like now now for for reasons that only the universe understands because it's not up to us it, it's like it has decided, and it's absolutely decided because of this show, because of my work, because like Sam Harris just came out with his book, Free Will, and he's like a best-selling author, so it's really out there. Um, so the universe has, has definitely decided, okay, it's time for humanity to, um, to get this right. And, you know, I was thinking about this the other day. I'm thinking like, well, you know, maybe, maybe, no, I, I, I can't, you know, I don't know why. All right, maybe like we weren't like intelligent or educated or civilized enough in the past to really understand this. It's kind of like you don't, you wouldn't teach like a nine year old kid to drive a car, you know, I mean, you could, but you wouldn't. Okay. So like, so like, cause a nine year old isn't ready to drive a car. So like, so maybe in the past we just, we weren't ready to learn this, but now apparently the universe has decided that, that we are. And I'm just guessing and if I'm guessing wrongly, don't blame me because I don't have a free will. <laughs> All right. Um, so again, it's just it's not enough that we understand that free will is an illusion. We have to apply it to our lives for it to make sense. And I got to start off with telling you, like, just recently, and you know, I, I'm just conjecturing. The universe is making me conjecture as to why this is going on. But recently, this is really sinking in with me. I mean, like, you know. I um I used to be very political. I mean, now with this Occupy thing, I'm thinking, all right, Occupy is going <laughs> to solve the world's problems. I'm kind of like retired from politics. But like, you know, in a, in a sense, I find it very difficult to kind of like dislike my political opponents now because like I keep telling them, wait a minute, it's not, it's, they're not responsible for the, their, you know, their views and opinions and, and you know, you know, stances and all that I think are completely wrong and, and evil and all that, you know, so I'm telling you that this is really working, but see, I do this show like on average once a week. I mean, I tape like, you know, three episodes at a time, so I'm not here all the time, but I also have my meetup once a month in Manhattan and then the call-in show in, in Manhattan that, that airs once a week, although we're, we don't tape, you know, live all the time, but it's generally a live show. And so like, you know, and I'm thinking about this a lot, and so like, so it's happening, but, but what I want to focus, what I want to emphasize on this show is like, you know, again, like, for those of you who understand that free will is an illusion, um, you can, you can, you know, go from just understanding that to applying it to your life, to make your life better, because this is why I'm doing this show, you know, it's, a, you know, I started off with the Occupy Revolution, you know, all this stuff. This, this relates on a personal level, you know, when, when, when people in our lives do wrong, you know, our, we're, we've been conditioned, we've been programmed by the universe to blame them and think they're, they're bad and then like try to get them back and all that stuff. And I'm not saying that, you know, we have to like take everything from people, we don't have to be a doormat, you know, sometimes we have to take action, we have to do things, like if somebody's coming at you to kill you, well, you know, you're not going to stop and say, well, wait a minute, like, you know, there's such a thing as self-defense regardless of human will, but, um, but yeah, this, you know, to the extent that we can just like go from just understanding that we don't have a free will to applying it to our lives, we, we can make our personal lives in the world much better. So, okay, now, granted, you know, this, this, this practice in deprogramming ourselves from free will belief 
will be much easier when academia gets this because they're really behind when governments get this when people in general get this I mean, so again you know um I'm really like pioneering this like a couple of years ago before I started doing my work. You know, the philosophers who wrote about this, they, they would write to other philosophers, charge $50 for their books. Nobody, you know, you know people wouldn't read them. Um, and most of them got the answer wrong. So like, so anyway, so, um, so yeah, um, this is happening, but it's, you know, I mean, it, I don't know, the, the universe is kind of like leading me to, to think that, um, may not happen too soon I hope it happens soon you know for all our sakes but anyway here let's go through how we can like you know just like systematically just kind of like retrain ourselves to like see ourselves and, and our world in the right way you know as not having free will okay first you want to kind of like you want to condition condition yourself you want to kind of like remind yourself anytime anytime your wife, your husband, your kids, your friends do anything that you consider wrong. It doesn't matter whether it's right or wrong, whatever. Who knows? You know, there might be a difference of opinion. But anytime you you find yourself, one, you know, perceiving that somebody in your life is doing something wrong, and this is the the key part. Two, find yourself becoming angry with them, you know, for that wrongdoing. That's the time to remind yourself. Wait a minute, they don't have a free will. Okay, so what happens? So you don't blame them, you know. So that's the next step. You know, like you practice not blaming them. So all right, they did something I did wrong, or, or they, they did something. The universe made them do something wrong. Okay, and so like you basically you remind yourself not to blame them. You you say as I was saying before, you may have to address a situation. You know, like let's say if somebody lied to you, you know. Well, you, you know, and, and you know it's a lie, whatever. You, you might say to yourself, all right, well, this person, you know, I can't really trust, you know, what they say all the time. But, but you don't blame them. Okay. And, and you got to ask yourself, yeah, even before you do that, you have to ask yourself. Because, like, you know, even religion, like, I was raised Jewish, and, like, you know, one of the principal teachings, because it recognizes we're flawed, that we, 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 you know, we don't have free will, well, it doesn't recognize we don't have free will, but it recognizes that we're doing wrong all the time. It says that, like, you know, judge favorably to, to, to like, you know, oversee small kind of, like, you know, to forgive people, you know. So, so a lot of times, you know, we do forgive, but, but you know, we, we want to kind of, like, we want to kind of, like, determine if if whatever they did calls for some kind of response um so all right so what happens um then let's say so let's say you've um all right you've reminded yourself that the person people don't have a free will you've reminded yourself not to blame them then what do you do next all right then you ask yourself why do you think that they did what they did that was wrong okay let's say they lied to you okay then then you start you know and this is what happens in therapy because like in therapy this is a, exactly what counselors and therapists do they don't like they don't encourage you know if they're good therapists their patients to like you know get really hostile and angry at people who do wrong they they encourage people to examine stuff so like you know why did this person lie? Was, was the person like afraid to tell the truth? Because generally a lot of times that's what happens when people lie. Um, you know, I don't know. They're, um, you just, you, you begin to explore, you know, what caused the person to do whatever it is that they did wrong. Okay? And, and then you can go beyond that. Then you ask, all right, why, you know, you remind yourself, why did the universe because it's the universe doing it again why did the universe get them to do wrong and um and then to the extent that like maybe you you became initially angry with them then you might want to ask yourself well why then did the universe cause you to um to then become angry you know and it's not like you're going to find answers for all these questions you ask yourself about, you know, the motivations for people's behavior, but it just gets you in a more creative, productive kind of like frame of mind to address the situation rather than just like, you know, uh, shooting from the hip kind of recrimination, you know, just like, you know, you don't want to do that. You want to basically think about what's going on to address it in the most intelligent, compassionate way. 
Okay. And so what happens when you do this? All right. If somebody does something wrong toward you with a free will perspective, you're going to blame them a lot of times and you're going to sometimes seek revenge and all that. But to the extent that you get better and better at understanding that free will is an illusion, nobody has a free will, then you go from seeing them, so, seeing them as, as evil, as bad, to seeing both them and you as victims. You're victims of, of, of the universe. Now, and, and that's the reality, because think about it. If they absolutely had to do what they did that you found hurtful, you know, wrong, whatever, and you were hurt by it, you're both victims, you know? Um, sometimes, yeah, sometimes, like, somebody who does wrong will... Um, will benefit in some way, but I think you know, a lot of times, you know, even with this free will illusion, we recognize that like, you know, a lot of times when we do wrong, you know, um, we may not be punished immediately, but, but, you know, I think more often than not, perhaps there is a law of this like universal justice that it's kind of doesn't make sense actually in a certain sense anyhow, but like, you know, just the idea that we, we get punished. Um, so yeah, so like w when we, um, when we see others and ourselves as victims, not as protagonists, as, as like, you know, perpetrators of evil, we're more compassionate toward, toward them and toward us. You know, and that's important. You get better and better at this. Um, now, all right. Then, you know, go, go back, you know, then you can go back to like, well, should you, should you be angry with the universe then? Because I, you know, at the stage that I'm at, this is what I'm, you know, I'm kind of like really getting much better at, at acting according to un my understanding that free will is an illusion. But then, like, I end up blaming the universe. I, you know, I can't understand, first of all, why the universe created pain in the first place. Because you, when you think about it, without pain, this reality, you know, this, this world, this earth and stuff would be complete paradise. You know, and like a lot of times under the free will perspective, you hear pe see people saying, well, yeah, you know, you feel pain, you know, it's a tool to teach you, you know, to teach you morals, to teach you compassion for other people. Because when you feel pain, you feel pain for others and stuff. It teaches you empathy and all. But think about it. If, if there was no pain, pain to begin with, then you wouldn't have to feel pain to, to, to learn to like overcome, to, to avoid greater pain and stuff. So... I don't know why the universe created pain. I don't know why the universe, you know, deceives us. But I'm not going to blame the universe. I mean, this is what I'm working with. This is kind of like, you know, this is like a work in progress here. Because a, a lot of these themes, you know, um, yeah, I'm working with them. As, as I work with the ideas, that they develop. And I'm thinking to myself, um, it could be, it could be that God or the universe, however we want to see it, may not have a free will either. For example, let's say we, we, um, we see the universe in terms of God, okay? We, we tend to kind of like, we tend to like ascribe to God goodness. God is good, okay? Most people think God is good. All right, if God is good, God has to be good. God doesn't have the choice. God can't decide, well, I'm going to like, you know, be evil, I mean, it doesn't make sense in a certain sense anyhow because, like, you know, that's how, there's that quest, you know, like, you know, because God is also supposed to be, like, omnipotent, you know, all-powerful. And then there's that, there's that quest in that, that, like, kind of points out the uh, inconsistency to that quest and to that consideration. It's like, if God is all-powerful, can God create a boulder so big that even God can't lift it? And so, so that holds us, you know. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, like, you know, it, it's probably... It's probably for the best to not even get angry at the universe, to, to think that, like, what's happening now, what had to happen. And because anger, you know, anger by definition is a reaction to perceived injustice, but it's an emotional reaction. It tends not to be pleasant. So, like, you know, what happens is um, we don't have to kind of, like, feel, quote-unquote, feel the anger to kind of, like, recognize that something's wrong. So, um, so yeah, and so, like, what happens, like, we may not like that we don't have a free will, because if we had a free will, you know, who among us would do anything wrong at any time? Who, who among us, if we had a free will, wouldn't be completely happy all the time? You know, so, like, so we might kind of, like, you know, <laughs> this is funny, because, like, we might tend to kind of, like, feel upset about that well we shouldn't even feel upset about that but it's the universe that would make us feel upset about that if, if we if we did 
but um but yeah i think i think you know as an end as an end goal to all this you know it's it's a way to overcome anger and feeling of, of vengeance towards others towards yourself and toward god the universe however we want to define what's actually really controlling everything the causal past the you know cause and effect this for this principle okay so like all right so like that's how you you know you, you apply these kinds of steps to situations you know and you can do the same thing to yourself with yourself when you do something wrong you you kind of like if you find yourself you know feeling guilty oh man i'm bad you know look at what i did you you remind yourself wait a minute you know this wasn't up to i didn't mean to do this i wouldn't have done this if i had a free will and then you then you um then <laughs> you don't blame yourself so anyway you go through these whole steps um but you can also like look for opportunities to do this like with people you're talking with you know i think it's pretty common in our modern culture that when people converse they'll converse a lot of times about their problems about what somebody in their life did to them recently that they're really pissed about i mean come on who we all do that you know um and like so what happens is like these are perfect opportunities to like to really in real time practice you know in a, in a really beneficial way because as i was saying before this is what therapists and counselors do practice at helping those people and yourself you know by extension also but you know by being involved in this um just overcome the feelings of of vengeance toward another person for example a person says to you well you know my friend just really um they were supposed to be someplace at a certain time and they just weren't there you know and i'm so pissed at them you know and like so the person's telling you this and so what do you do you ask them oh well why do you think they were late and they might say oh they're just like that you know they're always late or or they they they're either late or they don't show up they're like so inconsiderate you know there's and then you ask them okay so why are they inconsiderate and you know this at this point when you <laughs> go there the person starts thinking huh well you want to know i get they're, they're you know this person's parents actually weren't all that considerate either or 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 they might say I don't know that's just the way the person is and as soon as the person you know makes that realization you know the person is just that way then they begin to understand yeah the person didn't do what they did freely and and so like that's the key like you keep asking you know well why why did the person why wasn't the person there why was the why is the person inconsiderate why why for example is one person more considerate than another you know and that that when when you go th with that line of reasoning it is impossible to not ultimately get to to the point where you realize that factors outside of the person's control really determined whatever they were doing that were wrong that was wrong okay um now all right as i was saying before this this like kind of practice is great for like politics and maybe movies also cuz like you know well with politics you know like politics they're always like blaming demonizing their opponents you know political parties you know personal opponents and stuff and you can get sucked into that so like to the extent uh, that that you understand that these politicians don't have a free will that you know however heinous their their beliefs are that you disagree with that they they had absolutely nothing to do with these you know to having these beliefs that you know um then you know fine you might want to battle and politically vote them out of office you know work to to get them out of office or whatever but you can do that you know without any personal animosity to be toward them you know and and um and that that's good with movies with movies like a lot of times you um movies will encourage you a lot of times to like see you know one guy is good and one guy is bad a group of people is good and and some is bad and then, and you know i'm not sure that's all so helpful towards society because that that's kind of like encouraging insanity you know it's like with movies like you have like somebody who does bad and you recognize that it's bad but you kind of like feel bad for the criminal too for the bad guy too because you know he's going to get it in the end anyhow you know <laughs> that's the way it works so yeah so you know you can use this in movies um okay so, and and what happens when you do this yeah um in religion in religion they teach you don't hate your enemies love your enemies well fine but like as religion also teaches us that we have a free will 
and like you know if, if, if religion wants to really help people to love their enemies if, if religions begin to teach their congregations their adherents that no free will is a myth I'm sorry you know our prophets got it wrong they got some things right they got some things wrong this is something they got wrong then then it'll make it so much easier for people to understand that um, that um, you know they had no choice that you know they did you know to love to love people that um, that may do wrong because because they are victims of it and because you know if you know again like what's what I don't like about the universe because it does it makes us do things wrong because obviously we don't have a free will then it'll punish us for for what we did wrong that that is like just so wrong <laughs> that is so wrong I'm not gonna blame the universe but think about it so like to the extent again at least as people to the extent that like we recognize that um that we don't have a free will others don't have a free will we can just be more compassionate and love our enemies more well you know well whatever okay um so again the, the the more you practice this the easier it'll become and I'm telling you I'm going through a, through a major existential change in my life I mean I'm like bopping through town I'm listening to Pink Floyd because that's like a, you know I'm, I'm like learning like um I play lead guitar I want to get really good and Pink Floyd is about kind of like it's a surreal experience so I'm like I'm I'm viewing this world as if like whoa nobody has a free will and it's a much cooler way to view people yourself and everything it's just like it feels better um and the other thing like in terms of like appreciating this appreciate the wonder of it you know the wonder of how like whoa nothing is up to us we're just like again we may not like it because again if we had a free will we'd be completely happy completely good but just accept and appreciate how amazing it is that this is the reality nothing is, ab is, is up to us in any way we're just acting everything out it, everything, life is like a movie alright so I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I'll get, see you again soon on Exploring Illusion Free Will thanks <laughs>